Welcome to this video edition of Innovating at Sun with your host, Hal Stern. Today's topic, the OS. Hello and welcome to a special video edition of Innovating at Sun. I'm your host, Hal Stern, Vice President of Systems Engineering. I'm joined today by Greg Papadopoulos, Chief Technology Officer and Executive VP of R&D at Sun, and CEO and President Jonathan Schwartz. So, Greg, we've talked a lot about commoditization and R&D, and a lot of this, I think, at some point falls into Solaris. Do operating systems matter? Are we spending our money on good things here? <laughs> We're spending money on, on great things. I, I think probably more, it has surprised me more than anything else how much operating systems matter. And they matter because that is the fundamental contract between uh, what people expect from an application and those application services and all of the computing infrastructure that, that goes on underneath. And, and far from that being this indifferent co commodity thing, the, the properties and the ecosystems around uh, operating systems, and in fact, the binary distribution mm -hmm. of an operating system is the thing that is, is the most valuable to, to customers when they're actually using and operating and, and trying to get something predictable out of computing. It's also the, the collecting point for ideas in developers and developers, and how do you express uh, innovation in a platform that will be stable and that, that developers can can rely upon, I'm going to use this expression and I know it's going to be uh, supported going forward. I, I just think they're commodities. I mean, who cares about them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no real value there. You know, it, Why it, do it, we spend this money? <laughs> What's up with that? I mean, you know, it's one of those fundamental things that folks, I think, have a lot of folks really just didn't pay attention to. But if you have a computer, no matter where it is, you're going to need an operating system. Now, that operating system is, to what Greg was just saying, really the, uh, the, the fabric that ties together the computing infrastructure, the storage infrastructure, the network infrastructure, the programmer's uh, experience, the application services that are fundamentally delivered. It is, in some point, a, a collection point for some of the most valuable intellectual property that Sun actually builds, in part because it's how it's expressed to developers. And that, last we checked, was a relatively important relationship for Sun. Uh, we're going to do innovation that's a little unpredictable. We certainly got lots of free advice five or six years ago saying, you guys got to ditch Solaris. It's over. It's a commodity now. It's all about, you know, the future is going to be Linux, and, and therefore investment in OSs doesn't matter. It's like, well, no, we're going to invest in Solaris because OSs do matter. And again, that, that looked a little, you know, strange three or four years ago, but especially given some recent events, you know, I got to tell you, being the uh, only systems vendor in the marketplace with an operating system right now makes me feel very, very secure about the future of the company because we have a conduit for our own innovation, as well as a stable, secure, multi-vendor platform for developers. You've talked a lot about general purpose systems winning out. Uh, and for someone who spent some time in Massachusetts where there were a lot of special purpose vendors in the early 80s, yeah. we saw that. We saw that in terms of how the market narrowed down. The people that had the, the best box that did a lot of things tended to win. Is that the glue? You know, the, the operating system is the, the thing that adds well, the me, purpose to general purpose. Let me give you a, a couple examples, and, and Greg and I have actually been spending a lot of time on this specific issue, which is if your general purpose hardware infrastructure, the systems infrastructure, is fast enough, if the general purpose operating system is general purpose enough, then instead of just saying that's a computer, we can say, well, that's actually now a storage device. Just got to load it up with a lot of disks. Or maybe that's a networking platform. Why? Because we got great ways of interacting with the network. So we can take Solaris and our general purpose server platforms, both you know, Optron as well as the, the Niagara platforms, and we can build pretty much anything out of them, which makes us a remarkably efficient R&D organization. And, and I, I think the other thing that's happening here, it's both the quality and the performance of the, the general purpose substrates and that, uh, quite frankly, you know, half a dozen years ago, I'm not sure I would, I would trust uh, a general purpose operating system with the data integrity levels you'd like in, in a storage system. But we, we certainly attack that problem with things like ZFS and, and uh, uh, I think the, the software quality in a, a well-engineered operating system is uh, second to none, that, that uh, it, it forms that substrate. But the other thing, and I think people miss this, is that there, it, there is a tremendous amount of change and innovation that's taking place in the layers underneath. That's, if you look at what's happening with multi-core, multi-thread processing, or what's happening with the you know, massive uh, uh, disk subsystems, or even networking, and the fact that all these really interesting applications are network collections of operating systems. Um, 
there's a lot of, of basic innovation taking place at the at the kernel level in in OSs. I mean, in in Solaris, it took us a good decade to teach it about you know well how do you handle 64 or 128 threads and right now that that kind of knowledge and it's hard uh, is exactly what you need to go exploit multi-core multi-threaded processors so it's 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 both a uh, a level of, yes, this stuff is key and important, a collecting point, but it's also the thing that um, lets a, a huge amount of innovation go take place. We were um, having a discussion recently with a very large microprocessor company that was, they're a very, very innovative company. They do all kinds of really interesting things. And one of the things they were saying to us was, we're really frustrated at how ineffective our relationship has been with a very large you know, operating system competitor of ours because they won't allow us to express our innovation to developers. They've become, in some sense, a blocking point for it. So one of the things that we can do in the OS isn't just expose operating system features. We can actually expose the infrastructure features that go all the way down to the silicon itself. So it becomes you know, a vehicle to provide transparency, not just to the developer community, but into the, the infrastructure innovations. And we're certainly in the midst right now of you know, putting back the changes for Solaris necessary to support Niagara 2. I think as soon as folks see that in Open Solaris, they're going to have a lot of transparency into what's going on in Niagara 2. I think we're all a little uncomfortable about that, but it's going to happen. <laughs>